All right, <clears throat> hello students, and welcome to uh, our first lecture, our introductory lecture for uh, justification, um, Theology 5. And um, so in this course, uh, this semester, we're going to be discussing, discussing uh, two doctrines related to Christianity, uh, both justification uh, and sanctification. And so tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, biblical justification. I'm actually going to do a couple of things. So, uh, number one, we're going to define some terms, right? Look at uh, both uh, uh, Hebrew and Greek terms. We're going to define justification so that you guys have a, a good idea of uh, a working definition, hopefully a definition that you can use um, that's, that's not one of those long, drawn-out theological definitions that you have to memorize for a test but one that you can actually use. Um, and then uh, third, after we define some things, uh, secondly rather, uh, we're gonna review some of the major uh, New Testament text um, from Romans uh, that help us to uh, get an idea of, of what the New Testament teaches about justification. Uh, we don't wanna just define terms theologically and use um, you know, theological dictionaries, we want to look to the Bible to see uh, what the relevant passages are and how uh, we can properly interpret those passages. And then third, uh, we're just going to identify three different ways that the early church uh, viewed sanctification. Because here's what you're going to see as we move forward this semester is, you know, we're going to spend some time tonight defining justification and going through the relevant biblical passages. But you know, Christianity is 2000 years old and through the centuries, you've had various individuals who have identified various aspects of uh, justification and have highlighted those aspects. Some of those aspects of justification that were highlighted um, created various traditions. And so um, Really, generally speaking, none of the traditions that we're going to study uh, that have emerged in Christianity uh, really get too far off of the beaten path. But um, as a matter of prudence, I just want to make sure that for you guys to be um, well-rounded and educated on this issue, that through the course of the semester, at least the first half of it, um, you'll be looking at uh, some of the major views of justification. So... Um, so in this video tonight, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to keep a, an eye on time. And um, between 12 and 18 minutes or so, um, I'm probably going to pause it for an intermission. What I want, what I should do is I should record three separate videos, but I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, rather, I'm just going to pause at the 12 or 18 minute mark if I can be conscious enough of time and just take a brief intermission so that you can take a brief intermission. Uh, that way, if you need to view this lecture in you know, multiple attempts, you know, during your lunch break or, or whatever, you can do that. So um, that's what we're gonna do tonight. So let's, let's dive uh, right in and let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word that lives and abides forever. Thank you for all of the things that had to take place to preserve this word for us today. I pray that you would reveal yourself to us through your word, that you would draw us closer to you, that you would reveal the truth about salvation, about justification to us tonight. And I pray that as we interact with our families and our coworkers and strangers, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart would be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so I want to share uh, two definitions, or really three, but but two from from other people. So the first definition of justification comes from J.I. Packer. Um, as as you prepare for ministry, as you do research, as you um, read sermons, um, you will inevitably interact with J.I. Packer. And so here's Packer's definition of Justification. Justification is a judicial act of God pardoning sinners, accepting them as just, 
and so putting permanently right their previously estranged relationship with himself. That's Packer's definition. Uh, another definition I really like is from William Pope. William Pope says, Justification is the divine judicial act and applies to the sinner, believing in Christ, the benefit of the atonement, delivering him from the condemnation of his sins, introducing him into a state of favor and treating him as a righteous person. So I like both of those definitions. They're long, um, but I, I do think they capture the, the essence of, of the orthodox doctrine of justification. But here's what, here's what I want you to, to wrap your head around in, in terms of this doctrine. So most of us understand the, the, the ministry and the work we understand the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. We understand that. Most of us understand that the, the, the way that one moves from death to life and the way one receives eternal life is by placing their faith in Jesus. The book of Acts lays it out very clearly. In response to the question, what must I do to be saved? Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. That's it. That is the, that is the prescription for how one becomes a Christian. No matter how difficult we may make it, no matter how insincere we think people are if they don't cry at the altar or or whatever response, emotional response that, that we think people need to have from a biblical perspective, confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart, that's how you become a Christian. So we understand that. But in relation to justification, in the economy of God's salvation, now you'll, you'll hear that term quite a bit as you do your reading this semester, um, and as I, I lecture, but, but that term, the economy of God's salvation. So within the sphere of God's saving acts, where, where God takes someone from death to life. In the, we call it the economy of God's salvation. So in the economy of God's salvation, justification is the action that God takes when a person places their faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. So justification is something God does, and it is triggered in an instant, in a millisecond, right? As soon as, as, soon as it's done, it's, it's triggered by that belief in your heart and that confession. So that confession, that action that the person takes to receive the grace of God, when that person takes that action, it triggers justification. Right? So the term that we find in the New Testament that is translated uh, justified or to be justified or justification is dikaios. Um, it, it means there's several definitions, but they all kind of mean the same thing. Uh, to show righteous, to be to, to be declared righteous, or to declare righteous, um, if you take the the uh, present active indicative uh, of that, it would be the action of of declaring righteous uh, to be approved, especially in a legal or an authoritative authoritative sense, uh, and to declare guiltless. So, justification is a legal designation. Now, that's a little tough sometimes for people to wrap their minds around when, when we start using terms like legal designation. And I'm going to try to ex explain it, at least sum it up somewhat so that you can kind of wrap your mind around it. Not that it's a difficult concept, but I just want to make sure that uh, when this lecture is done, that, uh, that you can gather your kids in the room and your wife and say, let me explain justification and not take the rest of the night. So, um, so prior to receiving Jesus as Savior, 
all humans in the world are legally condemned. So God sits as, as the judge of all the living, of, of humanity, of the world. God is father. God is creator. He is sustainer. He is the architect of the universe, but God is judge. God has the right to serve as judge. Um, the, the definition that I like to use when people ask me to define God. Um, you have to go back to the seventh century to Anselm in the seventh century. And the definition of God is a maximally great being or that which nothing greater can be imagined. So the God that we serve, the God of the Old and the New Testament, is a maximally great being. There's nothing more powerful than God. And as that maximally great being sits as judge over his sovereign universe, his sovereign creation, like everything he created is his and he sits as judge. So God sits as judge. So a person's legal standing before God is guilty as charged. The guilty verdict bears a sentence. The sentence that accompanies that guilty verdict is condemnation or eternal death and separation from God in an eternal lake of fire. When a person places their trust in Jesus for salvation in that moment, God declares them not guilty, not condemned. And instead of sinful, God declares that person righteous. And we're going to go through that in just a few minutes. So justification then is a term we use to describe the divine act of transferring our legal status from condemned to innocent, from sinful to righteous. And this all comes as a result of our belief and confession that Jesus is the Christ. So the, the word that you find in the, the New Testament is propitiation. So Jesus was the atoning sacrifice. We're going to talk about atonement again in just a minute. But, but this all comes about because Jesus is our propitiation. Now, when I first started teaching in the church years ago, when I finally understood the Bible well enough to, to start teaching in a way that didn't embarrass me or, or my pastor. I, it, it would take me, you know, five minutes to adequately define propitiation. And we moved to, to North Florida about five years ago. We attend a very large church in Jacksonville. We love our church and our pastor talks about uh, propitiation quite a bit. I go to Church of 1122 in Jacksonville, our pastor, uh, Joby Martin, he talks about propitiation a lot. And I remember the first time I heard him talk about propitiation, he defined it. And he said, propitiation means a payment that satisfies. And I immediately thought, well, first of all, that's a better definition than I've ever come up with. And secondly, I really feel sorry for all those people that had to endure a five minute definition when I could have just said a payment that satisfies. So Jesus on the cross, there being sacrificed, willingly sacrificing himself is probably a better way to say that. The atonement, the, the, the propitiation, Jesus dies and in that moment purchases the payment that satisfies God's righteous requirements. So the payment has been made. And when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, justification is applied. So the the atonement and the propitiation make way for the salvation at which moment justification is applied. So um, it's the application of the work that Jesus uh, did on the cross. So that's my definition uh, with help from a lot of other people of justification. Um, we are at um, almost 15 minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and come right back. If you're just watching it, then there'll really be no uh, 
no movement, but uh, on my end, I'm going to take, take about a five-minute break um, so that we can do this in small bites. Be right back. <laughs> 